Hey, so I'm going to be showing you that carrier build again, and I'm just going to show you how effective this build can actually be. So you already know the build order and everything. I'm just going to show you where I mess up and how you can work with that mistake. And working with mistakes is extremely important. Now notice the placement of my pylon. I should have placed it either more over here or I should have placed it over here to block the ramp. But that wouldn't be a good situation because there are rocks over here and they could just go around all the static defense unless if i placed a cannon over here but that's a different story i i messed up the p placement of the pylon in the beginning and uh, i just tried working with the mistake i placed the forge over here not the best positioning um it was the only thing i could think of and you have to think fast you don't have much time to think about it's, you don't have two minutes to think where am I going to put this forge down? I just decided to put it over here because I thought I could just make a really long wall off to the point where the zerglings need to go all the way around to get inside. And on top of that, there's going to be Zell over there. That was just my thinking. So, and in order to distract the zerg player, I'm hoping his hatchery doesn't actually see it. He, he obviously sees it now because of the drone. If I can just go back a little bit. So I don't think he sees anything. But then he sends a drone. He wants to make sure the probe is one away. And this is good scouting on his part. And here's another major mistake that I made. This is early game. He pulls off four drones, exactly what he's supposed to do. He also had the scouting worker here, so that's just an extra bonus. You don't want to pull off any more workers than four, unless if you see, like, 20 cannons, then it's kind of an emergency scenario. And there I go, losing a ton of resources. I'm delaying mining time, but not as much as resources that I'm losing. So it's definitely hurting me on my part. And at this point... I decide to work on the wall up, putting a pile on there, and I'm probably going to transfer some drones eventually, put a uh, probe on that drone, try to kill it, and as we can already see, I'm in a 500 mineral deficit, maybe like 450 minerals because that pylon's 100 minerals, so 500 plus 100, do the math. And uh, our Zerg player is pretty content, he's going to feel pretty ahead by this, and any good Zerg player is going to expand after a successful takedown like this fail cannon rush on my parts i just did it mostly to take out his natural not to be uh, a dick or anything like that it's just this my type of style of play so i'm working on that carrier build now and i still forget to put down the siren eggs or i could have put the I could have put it down much earlier, like around 5 minutes. So it's like a minute and 30 seconds delayed. Mostly because of that cannon rush. And then I forgot for 20 seconds that gateway was already done. So not too big of a deal. But here's another huge mistake I made. I didn't kill off the drone. And he was able to take a geyser. And I really need all 4 gas to be able to do the carrier build. So that way I can eventually transition and put my third over here. Because... Can't really do carriers off of two base, because you really do need those upgrades. Without those upgrades, you're pretty much going to lose, because each interceptor, plus one, do you know how OP that is? Especially with the plus one armor, because those hydralists or corruptors sometimes aren't going to focus fire those carriers, and it makes that much of a difference, and it's just so OP. And... Notice what he's doing with his overlords. He's having two overlords in place. And uh, the reason why he's doing this, I feel like, is because I felt like he was going to do Nidus Worms. I noticed these overlords. I, was, I knew they were there, mostly because of that simulator. And I felt like there was going to be another one over here. And uh, I thought he was going to do Nidus or something because he's dropping down the Roach Worm. I don't think he's suspecting any Stargate play yet. Because I dropped down the Stargates over here right after the extractor is done so first of all it's out of vision from the extractor second of all i put down the stargates after the extractor is killed off and we just see our drum zerg player not drum player uh start to saturate his third uh doesn't seem like he's droning very much yeah like i'm pretty much on even footing with him 
felt like he could have been droning a little bit harder. It's okay though. He will figure out a way to get ahead. I'm sure that's what all their players do, but the reason why I'm showing this build again is just to show how OP it is. This third player dealt with it even worse than the other Zerg player and the way you're supposed to deal with it I figured out as Zerg is just to take out the Protoss player early as possible just put keep putting on pressure don't let him max out <laughs> if the if I max out it's pretty much the end of you because 3-3 upgrades are cl pretty close to that I gotta stop saying pretty but yeah you're you're screwed I don't know what else to say uh, like, a maxed out Zerg army is not going to take out a maxed out Protoss army. End of story. I don't care if you have 200, 200 corruptors and you killed off all your drones. I can micro those carriers back as soon as you focus. Well, actually, 200 corruptors, that's one shotting a carrier. So, go figure. Actually, yeah, mass 200, 200 corruptors could take out mass carriers because they do bonus damage first carriers and if he just microed it where he had hockeys for 50 is corruptors and for the other 50 he had it on another hotkey and he was focused firing with both of them on different carriers killing two off at the same time then yeah he would definitely have a chance killing off all those carriers and board rays and whatever composition i have with it but most of the time i'm just gonna have uh, stalkers with this build as well because if you notice I have a slight variation of my build I'm going for what's it called warp gate so that way I can uh, fend off any early push a lot easier if they plan to go for an early push and I decide you know I want to secure the cert I could either have my board race just hovering over here or I have a shiz ton of money. Why not? Why don't I just put a bunch of cannons? I think that's a way better situation. And I decide to check if he has a fourth over here. I was very surprised that he didn't. So this is when I start to move out with the void rays. And I want to cause as much damage as possible. What I don't realize is how big of an army he has. And why he has that. He noticed me taking out the overlords here. And here with some void rays. Did he think I had one Stargate or what was his thinking behind this attack? Why did he only put one spore crawler down? Why does he not have a Hydra Sten to deal with these void rays? A few queens and a few spore crawlers is not enough to deal with this amount of void rays. Especially with the amount of overlords I get to kill. This is like a happy day for me. So I'm just going to play it from here and we're just going to let this pan out. Now notice how conservative I'm being. I don't want to overcommit to this attack because I'm afraid he has Hydralis and Hydralis move exceptionally quick with Queens and I don't want them to get under the Void Rays because they can, within one second, they can snipe a few Void Rays and that's bad, okay? So we see him moving out with his army and he immediately goes for the third. He probably feels like there's a third over here. I feel safe with the amount of cannons I have and with a couple zealots and a void ray. I thought this would ward him off, but nope, I was wrong. And he has an overseer to top it off. I could have made some dark templars, but like my build has no room for that to put in dark templars. It's way too gas intensive. So while he's taking out my third, he immediately goes for my natural and uh, I'm killing off his natural as well. If we look at the units lost tab. I'm way ahead because you want to know why <laughs> I'm killing off so many overlords. I killed off all the ones over here and I killed off all the ones over here. Look how, I was about to say, look how supply blocked he is, but I guess he just re-overlorded something like that. Is he making a bunch of overlords in anticipation? Yeah, kind of. So I, I killed off a lot of units over here with the cannons and I feel pretty good about that. And I have these carriers defended off in the void ray. And I have cannons over here as well. I pretty much overcommitted to defending this attack. And it still wasn't enough. He still caused quite a bit of damage. He, I mean, he killed off my third. I thought I had quite a bit of cannons, but I was wrong. And I had gateways to support to decrease that surface area. And I knew I was ahead at this point. Because he made a huge mistake. He overcommitted to this attack. I don't know why he was so dead set on taking this as well. I guess he felt if he didn't take this out, he would have 
lost the game, and it's kind of right. I mean, I took out his na his macro hatchery, his natural bunch of overlords. He was at 180 supply before, but he still has this to uh, rely on, and he gets his hatchery going. He's putting up more overlords, more spore crawlers, and here's another mistake I make with my void rays. I overcommit right here, and I didn't even get the overlord. And this is the part where he takes out three void rays, which is kind of bad. And I immediately, when I see the corruptors on the chase, I put, take the carriers from over here and I send them to save whatever void rays I can. I knew eventually the carriers would make in time to send the void rays. I mean, to save the void rays. And I was able to take out two corruptors. So kind of meeting an eye for an eye, but not really. I mean, three void rays for two corruptors. Definitely not a good trade, but I I was still ahead. I wish I just didn't overcommit in that attack, and I see a few roaches up here. Take those out. There are a couple other roaches over here as well, and I take those out. Not too big of a deal at this point, and then we see him just double expanding. Uh, he's at this point he's really far behind, and he's gonna he's gonna need something pretty pretty drastic. So we just see him getting a bunch of hydralis as a response, getting his plus one. But look at the money discrepancy. I'm way ahead in workers. I have the perfect amount, near perfect amount. You want 80. And once I start saturating this, I know I have a lot of money. I just want to get this as well. Why not? I could easily just crush him at this point with the army that I have. This is a pretty big amount. That's what she said. And I just realized, you know, might as well just play conservatively. Make sure I can actually kill off my opponent. There's no rush. I'm just going to take my time, chill, get my fourth, start to saturate that. Maybe even get my fifth going. Because I want a bunch of gateways to transition off of just in case if he's able to kill off my mass air army. Because... You know, it's always good to have a backup plan before you commit to something. I was about to say something pretty offensive. Glad I caught myself. Um, I don't know what else to really talk about, so I'm just going to fast forward at this point and just show basically what happens. I just go over here to check to see if he went for a fourth over here, and again... I don't realize he has a base over here, and I do go for my fifth, actually, I kind of forgot about that. And at this point, I'm going to move out to secure that fifth by putting on a lot of pressure, and we see him putting on pressure so that way he can secure this expo as well. But the thing is, look at the upgrades, 2 one, one zero. let's look at my air army, 2-1, oh, I thought I had way better than that. Well, whatever. I don't care. I kill off these rocks for some reason. I guess to make it a shorter flight distance or something. And let's slow down for this part. Let's just watch the massacre. Look at all the interceptors just doing so much damage. And I do actually get my three upgrade. So instead of six damage per interceptor, it's eight. And just multiply that out by like 50 trillion gazillion interceptors. That's... That's a ton of damage, and I warp in a bunch of stalkers over here, and that's when that gateway plan comes in handy. I was able to save this nexus, even though I'm mining off of one gas. I don't think I realized that. I think the roaches killed off this simulator, the probes mining from the simulator over there. Either that, or they've never been mining that whole entire game. I kill off these rocks fairly quickly, and I decide I'm just gonna put on a lot of pressure. And he doesn't have near the amount of workers that I have. And we just watch the units lost tab skyrocket. And he is going to get a carrier from focus firing, a couple carriers, it's weakening out the army, but just look how much more money I have, look how much more supply I have. I took out his natural, I took out his army over here. He wasn't able to take out this at the very least. He probably thought I was still on the space and wondering how I was able to afford all this. And he just leaves the game, but I don't mind. This is, again, a pretty trolly build. And I 
you know what? Here's a fun activity. Count the amount of times that I say pretty. So anyways, that's this cast or not really cast. Just showing you a uh, mass carrier build, how you can fend off early aggression and how you can end the game with it. And, the, and this is normally the amount of time that it takes. And it's a fun build. I really recommend trying it. It works in Diamond League for me. I've already won like six or seven times with 100% success ratio. Still waiting to lose. So that's that. And I hope you learned something.